I'm Joshua Bardwell, and you're going to learn something today. And what you're going to learn today is 3D mode. Now, in case you don't know, 3D mode means that your quadcopter can reverse its motors in flight so that instead of pushing up, it's pushing down. And that's silly. Why would you want to push down? Gravity's doing the work for you, right? Well, you could flip upside down and then fly upside down, and that's kind of cool. A lot of people think that 3D mode requires specialized equipment. I don't know, do ESCs, props, motors, but it turns out that the BL Heli ESCs that and KISS and other ESCs, but a lot of my viewers are using BL Heli, they can already do 3D mode. You don't need any special equipment. Right now, today, with just like 10 minutes of setup, you could be trying out 3D mode and wrecking your quadcopter. So what we're gonna do is, we're gonna use this guy. This is the Mobulus 7. It is a little brushless Tiny Whoop. And since any brushless ESC and motor can do 3D mode, what better to do it with than a little Tiny Whoop like this, where if we crash, maybe there's not so much to lose. Stay tuned. Before we dive into the video, uh, let's just make sure we're all on the same page. Actually, before we dive into the video, let's just address the <laughs> elephant in the room that I just noticed now that I'm editing this. What the hell happened to my shirt? I had a clean shirt in the intro. Now I have something all over my shirt. I don't know. I'm just going to blame the fact that I have a newborn and uh, I'm going to say my baby slobbered all over me. I'm not throwing this whole video out and reshooting it, but I apologize for the fact that I have something all over my shirt. I have no idea. <laughs> On with the video. <laughs> Before we dive into the video, uh, let's just make sure we're all on the same page. This video is going to assume that you already have a quadcopter that you know how to fly and you've got an arming mode set up. And basically, the only thing this video is trying to do is show you just how easy it is to try 3D mode without, you know, too much effort. This is also not a how to fly 3D mode video. In fact, if you really want to learn to fly 3D, the best place to do it is the best place to learn to fly any quadcopter in the simulator. It's even easier to set up in the simulator. So you've got a quadcopter, you can fly it. It's got an arming mode. It's all ready to go. And you just want to get it ready to fly 3D. The first thing you're going to do is if you fly with up tilt, turn the up tilt way, way down. See, look, Got this up tilt here. When you flip upside down, that up tilt's really gonna be working against you, especially in the beginning when you're just learning to fly 3D. Turn your up tilt as low as it can possibly go. And if you're flying on a frame like the Chameleon where the lowest up tilt is like 20, 25 degrees, you may struggle a little bit with this. Start in the simulator. The other thing we're gonna assume is that you're using D-Shot. D-Shot gets rid of any issues with calibration. And with multi-shot and one shot, you have to calibrate the endpoints. but when you go into 3D mode, there's a whole lot of other calibration and adjustment that you need to do. Even the cheapest DSCs today support D-Shot, and we're gonna assume that you're using D-Shot. We're not gonna talk about all that calibration nonsense. Okay, so then, what do you gotta do in Betaflight and BL Heli to get 3D mode working? First, I'm going to start in BL Heli Suite. This is BL Heli Suite 32. It is used for BL Heli 32 ESCs. There's a separate app, BL Heli S ESCs use and older BL Heli ESCs if you still have them. That is just called BL Heli Suite. And uh, I'm actually not sure which ESC this uh, Mobula has on it, but we're going to find out in just a minute. I'm going to need to connect to the COM port. So I'm going to pick the correct COM port and I'm gonna connect. And then now that I'm connected, I'm gonna plug in the battery. The ESC will not talk without the battery plugged in. And I'm gonna hit read setup. And when you, this happens, that probably means I don't have BL Heli 32 ESCs. I probably have BL Heli S ESCs. This is BL Heli Suite, not BL Heli Suite 32. And when I hit read setup, Ba bam I get my answer. Now, one of the things some of you guys are going to freak out about right here is you see how it says setup not in sync with master. You can probably ignore that. I have a video about that. I'll put a link in the video description or I'll make a little pop-out card up at the top of the screen that you can click and watch that video when you're done with this one. Okay, so we're here in Beale Heli and we can configure our ESCs. And what I need to do 
is, well, first thing I want to do is I just want to make a note of the current settings of the ESCs so that I can put them back later if I, before you start screwing around with anything, make a backup of your configuration. And I see that the motor direction for all of them is normal. Good to know. So then what I'm going to do is I'm going to change the motor direction from normal to bidirectional. And if any of them had been reversed, I'm going to change the, the motor direction to bidirectional reversed. Since all my motors were normal, I'm going to change all of my directions to bidirectional. Joshua from the future here, this turns out to be wrong. When I go to actually fly the quad for the first time, it flips out. The motors are spinning the wrong direction. I am not really sure why this is. It seems like if your motors are normal, then you would want them bidirectional. And if they're reversed, you would want them bidirectional reversed. But there you go. Um, moving on. And if I just do, these are not in sync, so they're not going to write. What I'm going to need to do is I'm going to right click and I'm going to just write each of them individually. If I were to go into options and choose to enable sync motor direction to multiple ESCs, then it would have synced them. But you don't usually want to sync your motor direction because a lot of times you'll have one or two ESCs that need to be reversed and the other one doesn't. And so you don't want to actually do that. Okay, so now they are all set to bidirectional. So we've told the ESCs that we want them to operate in 3D mode. Now we need to go into the Betaflight configurator and tell Betaflight that it is going to be in 3D mode. If you do one of these things and not the other, your quad's not going to fly right. So we're going to do that by going to the configuration tab and here, 3D ESC slash motor features, we're going to enable 3D mode and hit save and reboot. Now, in order to test this, we're going to go to the Betaflight Motors tab. And I have got a battery plugged in and I have got my props on, but this is a little teeny tiny tiny whoop. I'm not too worried about chopping my face off. Remove your props if you feel that's appropriate. Or if you're using a bigger quad, a two inch, three inch, a five inch, blah, take your freaking props off, people. And the first thing you're going to notice is in the Motors tab, something's different. All of the sliders are at 1500. And the reason for that is that with 3D mode enabled, 1500 is the zero position, the mid position. And when you raise the throttle, it goes, the motor spins one way. When you lower the throttle, it goes the other way. So now I'm just going to verify that. And by the way, the fact that our throttle is at 1500 and our motors aren't spinning suggests that things are probably working pretty well. I'm going to say, I understand the risks, the props are removed, and I'm going to just click on one of these sliders. I'm just going to, I like to use the up and down arrows instead of the mouse because the mouse you can make these big changes and I'm just going to verify when I raise the slider the motor spins one way when I lower the slider the motor spins the other way and sure enough it does another thing I'm going to suggest you do if you haven't done this already is go to the arming angle and set the max arming angle to 180 degrees and what the arming angle normally does is prevent you from arming the quad when it's upside down but i guess one of the advantages of 3d mode is that if you're upside down it's even better than turtle mode maybe you could just take off and fly upside down you're certainly going to want to flip the quad over and just test out 3d mode by arming it upside down so at least temporarily you're probably going to want to disable this the next thing to do is to go somewhere safe plug in a battery and test this out and when you do that, if you have got your motor direction wrong, the quadcopter is going to like wobble like crazy and try and flip out. So definitely do this somewhere safe, especially if you're doing this with a larger quad. The bottom line is that when you raise the throttle above 50%, then your motor should spin the normal direction that they normally do. And when you lower the throttle below 50%, the motor should spin the opposite direction. Let's go do a hover test. So the first thing that's going to be different for you in 3D mode than what you might be used to is that the neutral position for your throttle is no longer all the way down, but it is the center position. And if you look in the DVR, you'll see that the throttle is now at zero. It's at minus 100 and plus 100. So that's you're going to need to center the throttle in order to arm, not lower the throttle. So I'm just going to try and hover the quad at first. You see it's refusing to arm until I... Go to mid throttle. Now it's armed and I'm just going to level it. Yeah, it's not flipping out. I'm going to raise the throttle and sure enough, no problem. Oh good, how convenient. We're upside down. So now I'm going to arm and see if I can... OK, 
take off upside down. Ah, I, I have no idea what I'm doing here. So, um, <laughs> I did. <laughs> uh, so the first, the first question that I wasn't sure about was, are these props going to have enough thrust to fly me upside down? Um, the props that are used by 3D pilots like Zoe FPV are actually symmetrical, so they make basically the same amount of thrust whichever direction they're spinning. Normal props are not symmetrical. They're way, way more efficient than 3D props, but when you reverse them, they don't make much thrust. We seem to get enough thrust to get off the air, so that's got me confident enough to try to go outside and fly this with it. I've got a little more room, and I'm not going to... Well, let's be honest. I'm still going to crash. Yep, there you go. How about that? All oh, right to the tree. All right. You know, I have always thought that a lot more people would be interested in 3D if they knew just how easy it was to set it up, and that's why I made this video. Although 3D flying itself is like its own discipline, you can go watch Zoe FPV, who's one of the most prominent 3D freestyle pilots. I've often thought that 3D would be almost more interesting if you just like sprinkled it into regular freestyle flying. If you went inverted for a split S and instead of just going, I'm in 3D mode now and flying upside down for a hundred feet, what if you just kind of gently pushed a little bit to extend that split S in a way that was a little more subtle? I hope that as more people try 3D, we'll start to see more creativity and more expression and that's, you know, the awesome thing about freestyle. One more thing before I go. If you try 3D mode as a result of this video and you, like, get some interesting freestyle or any kind of interesting flying, let me know. Put it down in the comments. Put a link to your YouTube video down in the comments. And let's see what you come up with, ways to incorporate 3D into your freestyle flying. Micro size, 5 inch size, beast class 3D. No. No. No, 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 no. <laughs> that's going to do it for this video. Thank you so much for watching. Happy flying. Upside down.